everyone, welcome to um, our next Q&A uh, with Siobhan Kelly, obviously, with, from David Collins Studio. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so, today we'll be looking at how David Collins Studio uses light and lighting in its projects. Um, we're going to be looking at um, a wide range of subjects, ranging from the beauty of moonlight to the role of technology in the home. So, Siobhan, if you could just explain the slightly cryptic title of your presentation, what do you mean by the materiality of lighting or light? So, um, you know, we may think of lighting as a sort of means to an end. Actually, it's, it's so much more than that. It's, uh, light is um, a sort of environment. It's also the surface. It's also, um, uh, yeah, that it's, it's what elicits an emotional response to a, to a, to a space. That's okay. And... Can you expand, expand a little, little more on the idea of light as a physical thing? How do you actually make that work within a project? So, for example, um, we look at surfaces, layers. Uh, in this particular project you have back here, we're looking at lighting the ceiling, for example. We've got coffers, panelling, looking at um, uh, how um, light interacts with the various materials, the various furnishings. Um, and how, at what stage is lighting a consideration for you? Is it an early on consideration? Is it something you work more once you've got talking to the client about the brief? And so, I mean, lighting is really central to everything that we do with, in relation to design. Um, David Collins has a, as a studio, we have a, a strong approach to colour, to um, materiality, layering, tonal, um, sort of tones and... Uh, surfaces um, it's the sort of start of the emotional journey I suppose of, of a building you know when you look at kind of an entrance to um, to a project you know it can be a statement it sets the tone for how you experience the rest of the building so uh, and for us it's really you know in, in many ways how crafting a response to architecture and, and that's uh, so, yeah, so it forms a really central part of our process from the outset of a project all the way through to um, the, the whole conversation with the client all the way through to the end when you're commissioning with um, the artwork, the kind of final flourishes and the lighting designers. Okay. And in terms of how you make the most use out of decorative and architectural lighting pieces together, obviously we can see there there's a really strong pendant element there supported by the architectural lighting around yes, it. Yeah. Talk me through a little bit more of of that and how it's how it works specifically with this concept here. So we use lighting, I suppose lighting, feature lighting as a kind of, I suppose a, a method of creating identity and wayfinding. So I mean, in, in this case, this is a um, a uh, service department, and uh, this is a sort of central uh, corridor within the building, and it's a sort of moment that brings you back, so you kind of know where you are, your position within the whole building. It gives you an opportunity to orientate yourself. Uh, it's also a kind of feature, so it's a sort of statement of the development as a, as a whole. Um, and then here you have it, you have the actual feature lighting lit with uh, a combination of down lights. Uh, you've got some linear lighting across the coffer. Um, we're having, we've got washers down the um, different textures of the wall, so you've got um, this shagreen panelling to these sliding curved sliding doors and then we have inset panelling with various different types of textures and um, uh, uh, metal trim and so all these kind of layers of materialities have been brought to life by architectural lighting but also the feature lighting the decorative lighting itself. And is this a, be a bespoke piece that's been made for this project? Yes, it would have been designed. It would have been a bespoke. Piece, yeah. Okay. Um, as you've just mentioned, David Collins Studio is well known for its use of colour. How does this then influence your lighting decisions? I know it's very warm in here. <laughs> Excuse me, didn't, didn't work, shouldn't have worn wool. Um, so this, for example, this is Kipps Bay. This is very much inspired by um, the blue bar at Berkeley. And um, in this instance, you can see we've got um, decorative lighting. We also have architectural lighting. Um, and and we're, light, we're looking at all the different surfaces uh, and how they're brought to life. So we have a bit of relief on the panelling. We, we have a, de a piece of decorative or decorative wall sconce, so we have that kind of contrasting colour, but it's also um, working to um, illuminate the, the actual surface and bring that to life. This, the, the original blue bar actually had something like 200 uh, types of blue incorporated into it, so being able to utilise lighting to, um, I suppose, add depth to all of that was really, really, really helpful. 
and I notice obviously there's a bit of a tie in there with the, the wall lights and the red that you can see on the is that a, a table there? on the I console on the side yeah. yes yeah yeah so bringing in that sort of the, the accent colors it's an opportunity for a bit of playfulness as well um, And again, are these bespoke pieces been made specifically for yeah, this project? Yeah, they made for this piece. Actually, something, um, something that's really interesting about this as a composition, um, or something that we like to play with, is creating a kind of family. So looking at um, pendant lights and wall sconces and looking at how um, you might reinterpret different, different forms. So you've got the tassels, but you've got pom-poms, you have the red, you've got the sort of circular discs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is obviously quite a bold space. What about the more sort of yes. neutral tones and spaces where it's a bit more like cleaner, I guess, in terms of colour? How do you yes. then work to still sort of bring that to life with materials and lighting and things like yeah, that? Yeah, so I mean, even, even with a neutral space, everything that we do is very layered. And, um, you know, we do work a lot with the kind of nuances uh, of tone. So, um, I mean, actually, this is, this, is, this is a great example. We were talking earlier about... Um, uh, the um, uh, materiality of lights, and actually, you can just look at artists today and how they uh, embody that, that or give light that kind of embodiment. Mm -hmm. So, what is this that we're seeing specifically on the screen at the moment? Then, uh, well, so this is Anthony McCall. Actually, something uh, I think something that's really interesting about what we're seeing here is the kind of form making that you have with light. So. It's something that we'll sort of come on to a little bit later as well, um, maybe with some more kind of real life interior examples. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so, so. so this is a great one actually, just to, to build on that, that sort of idea of form making mm -hmm. um, and uh, layering depth of space. So this is a reception in um, uh, Mahanakan, which is a project that we had in uh, Bangkok, and here you have um, what we what we have done is create. A sort of identity, I suppose, at the entrance. You have your textured walls, you have uh, bronze trim, and then we're using lights in a way to um, emphasize the direction and add depth and, uh, and yeah, physicality, I suppose, to, to the light. What, for you, what's one of the most interesting things about lighting when you're working on a project? What sort of makes it special in a way when, it, when you come to that part of it? Oh. It's, the, it's all about the creation of atmospheres for me. So um, something that we, I think you can kind of see it here a little bit, is uh, something we work with quite a lot is the spectrum of candlelight. So that kind of more yellow tones of 1900 Kelvin-ish. Um, it's a very flattering light, it's very naturalistic. It creates that, lends that sort of atmosphere of everything being um, uh, very relaxed. And it's great in a bathroom like this. Actually, you have a combination here of the kind of brighter light around the mirror, which is really important if you're trying to do your makeup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then you have that kind of sanctuary of space. You have actual candlelight. You have, um, yeah, it's everything all combined together. So in terms of products then, obviously LED is, is making lighting options much more flexible. There's much more variations, lots of modular pieces. Sure. How do you sort of use that and then the, sort of balance the traditional elements with the technology do you know what i mean like the, the sure. more modern products yeah i mean technology i think oh this is <laughs> sorry to jump back um, it's before okay. we jump we onto jump technology as much as we like yeah <laughs> bef before before we jump onto technology let's go back to candlelight because actually this is such a this is probably the most physical form of light that we would employ in a space to create atmosphere and um um you know this idea of of being lit by candles um, at a dinner table, you know, these particular, this is, um, what was her name? It's gone out of my head now. Um, oh, we've lost it. Sorry. Es oh, es it's back. So Estrid Erickson, sorry, her name just disappeared out of my head for a minute, but Estrid Erickson, so she was actually, um, uh, she was interviewed on the radio back in the 50s about candlelight, and for her, the notion of being lit from above was far more flattering than being lit from below. I mean, you have that with the campfire flashlights when you're telling ghost stories, that kind of really yeah. shocking light. Um, and so she designed this range of candlesticks to be much higher, raised above the table. Um, and I just think that's a quite a lovely notion, quite poetic notion. Yeah. And then to, to jump back to technology, the yeah. opposite end of the spectrum, I guess. Uh -huh. um, you know, technology is really important. It's changing all the time. 
I think it's really important that as designers we are aware of emerging technology yeah. and um, how we might, that might be integrated within um, a scheme. You know, we're, we're, this is a society, the society that we live in now is one of um, specialisms. And as designers, we're uniquely positioned as sort of that sort of T-shaped um, professional, I uh -huh. suppose, to communicate with all the various consultants. And um, you know, we like to work with strong um, integrator, integration uh, specialists. Mm -hmm. But for us, technology, you know, everything is about creating a timeless experience. The technology isn't the kind of the focus. It's it's what enables the atmosphere and what enables the space. Okay. So tell me uh, more, if we maybe go on to the next slide, see what we've got going on project-wise. So tell me more about the lighting within this space. That's a really strong, dominant, decorative piece there. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a chandelier that was developed with Lobmeyer. It's a really um, statement piece, it's quite beautiful. And, and actually, what in this particular space, what brings everything to light, it's not just the feature, it's the way in which the walls are lit. So you can see you have these two uh, floor standing lights um, yeah. either side of that wall. That wall's covered in this beautiful hand painted, hand embroidered um, wall covering. You can kind of see here on, which one is that, left or right? <laughs> um, and then underneath the dado there, you have that cracked gesso. So this is just another example of layering of texture space. And it's, it looks like it's quite a clean look from a distance, but yeah. actually, uh, and, you know, part of the, the, sort of the approach to layering that we have as a studio in color is that, and, and lighting yeah. is um, that uh, slow reveal and that discovery of moments, mm -hmm. something that we, we try and establish in, throughout the journey of, a, of, a, um, of, the, of a, the design of a building. Yeah. Um, okay, and is this another, oh, is that okay? Well, I mean, this is just, I suppose, another, another example of using um, lighting with, to create that kind of trompe l'oeil effect of hand-painted walls. Uh, and then on the other side, we have the backlit panels, which is actually a direct response. This is 1010 Park Lane. It's a direct response to the actual architecture. Yeah. Um, quite different. You know, one is very contemporary. Well, they're both very contemporary, but one is um, it's a very kind of uh, enveloping, if you mm -hmm. like. Um, and then if we move to the next one, so just looking back at kind of feature lighting, Craft is something that's really central to what we do. Um, you can kind of see it in the first the dining image that we talked about a minute ago. Yeah. Um, and then in here, this is very, in some ways, you could you could say this is a very clean lined space, very fresh. But the craft of the the sort of the bronze and the richness of the the, the sort of uh, blown glass gives that element of texture and yeah. softness to the space. Um, it's quite. An abstract piece as well, isn't it? And quite a traditional. Like if you look at the interiors, yes, it's yeah. all quite traditional, and the the light is actually quite abstract. Yeah. So that sort of eclecticism, if you like, that kind yeah. of curation of um, pieces is something that uh, we really embrace in the studio. Okay. Um, Should we move on. To so this is obviously then the complete opposite with the, the clean lines. Yeah. yeah. So clean lines again, in some ways, sort of freshness in some ways. But this is looking at um, uh, using linear lighting to bring out the sort of su subtle tonality in the various. Um, textures that we have here. We're also looking at lighting the ceiling. So I think ceiling, the ceiling is really the kind of the fourth wall in some ways, if you yeah. consider it that sense. And it's so important to, that the ceiling and the walls are lit in a way that um, the space doesn't become very flat. Yeah. Uh, and okay. it's, it's also something that, um, you know, the, the idea that, again, going back to this idea of the reveal that each different room in a house might have its different, its own character and its own um, atmosphere, if mm -hmm. you like. Something that uh, somebody once told me that David Collins used to say this all the time in the studio. Oh, right. <laughs> that every room should feel of itself you know, different. But then as well, sort of connecting those rooms at the same time, exactly, isn't it? And yeah. making sure that it all flows and it's a, it's a story, as, as Completely. I guess. And, and actually architectural lighting um, has uh, a, a big part to play in enabling that flow. Um, so, you know, you're not kind of just jumping from one environment to, one to the other. So, yeah. We've just about got 30 seconds oh, left. Wow. Is okay. there anything else that you wanted to cover in today's talk? Maybe this one. <laughs> this is actually my, my favorite light of all time at the moment. Um, and this is a, it's a, it's a, a light, that, a pendant light that was created for a hamburger restaurant. Um, it's currently sold by Technolumen, I think, or stocked by Technolumen, but it, it was, um, the restaurant was called Three Witches. Okay. And um, I love this for so many ways. It sort of embodies narrative and the kind of craft in function. You know, it's a crystal ball. It references this 
the idea of the three witches at the start of Macbeth. Um, and, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I just think it's a wonderful light for many reasons. And we actually used it in um, a retail project not too long ago, and Jimmy Chu, which I think is the next okay. slide along. Should we have a look? So, oh, yeah, yeah so there we go. It gives you a sense of too. how you, you can use it as, um, you know, to create an atmosphere, but also as a very kind of specific task spotlight. Great. Anyway. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Siobhan. I think we could have gone on for a bit longer then. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you, everyone.